Hello, and welcome to week two of the WIAA football season. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of dead ball officiating, a NFHS point of emphasis this year. Dead ball officiating may be viewed by some game officials as an afterthought and a time to take a break. However, when the ball becomes dead, is the most critical time for game officials to continue to perform their duties in order to maintain decorum among opponents. Game officials should strive to be excellent dead ball officials, since the likelihood of fouls being committed is perhaps at its highest. Dead ball fouls include behavior that is outside the normal, the normally accepted boundaries of football and can involve both players and non-players. Some examples are baiting and taunting, fighting, throwing equipment in frustration, verbal abuse of game officials, and initiating contact with an opponent after the play is over. Because of this type of behavior tends to gender ill will between opponents, it is imperative that it is immediately recognized by game officials and penalized accordingly. NFHS football rules penalize unsportsmanlike actions in different ways. First of all, Illegal personal contact is a category of fouls that involve contact with an opponent. Frequently referred to as personal foul, illegal personal contact can result in disqualification if the game officials deem the foul to be flagrant. Now, when a DQ scenario occurs, maintain your composure. Get the correct player. Get their number. Make sure that the crew gets together to have a conference and be certain within that to have everybody agree on the player, their number, the actual penalty that occurred, and then take and communicate that information to both the coaches so that they are aware of the scenario. Even though they may involve unsportsmanlike actions, penalties for dead ball illegal personal foul contacts with limited exceptions are always enforced from the succeeding spot the same way as penalties for unsportsmanlike conduct fouls are enforced. While there are no rules mandating additional penalties for multiple illegal personal contact fouls committed by the same player or non-player, good dead ball officiating will prevent participants from repeatedly committing these types of fouls. Game officials must recognize situations where opponents are likely to commit dead ball fouls and prevent them from happening through positioning and communication with players. Also, unsportsmanlike conduct fouls, by definition, are non-contact fouls, other than illegal participation, and these are fouls that do not influence a play. The penalties for these fouls are always enforced as dead ball fouls from the succeeding spot. When an unsportsmanlike conduct foul is judged to be flagrant or when he, any player or non-player commits two unsportsmanlike conduct fouls in the same game, the offender is disqualified. Unsportsmanlike conduct fouls cannot be combined with illegal personal contact fouls to disqualify an offender. Recognizing unsportsmanlike actions requires game officials to be familiar with and use approved mechanics. Since most dead ball fouls occur within the three seconds of the end of a play, maintaining appropriate distance and angles after a play ensures game officials who do not have runner responsibility will be positioned so that they can monitor areas around the ball. This halo principle allows effective coverage of all 22 players. Rather than rushing to retrieve the football or focusing on the area around the runner, game officials should gently pinch in toward the nearest players, keeping them within sight and sound until the opponents have separated and teams are on their own side of their line of scrimmage. This is particularly important after a touchdown or try, when multiple players and substitutes are intersecting as they enter or leave the field. Also keep in mind that if an official recognizes or identifies a player losing their self-control, talk with coaches and get that player to the sideline. Get them out of the contest. This will is a primary way of preventing these actions from going too far by a player and leading to a dangerous situation. 
Understanding the need to eliminate unsportsmanlike actions from the game, properly and consistently penalizing unsportsmanlike conduct and illegal personal contact and using NFHS-approved football game officials mechanics and officiating philosophies are all critical steps to improve sportsmanship in high school football. Have a great week number two, and we look forward to the remainder of the WIAA football season.